Do you see there? Right there. <laughs> Babe. You good girl. Hmm? Where are you going? Welcome back to Plants Not Plastic. I'm Nikita and I bring you recipes that are delicious, inexpensive, simple, and healthy. Today I want to bring you another kitchen tip for how to cook white rice. You can just look at the back of the package and make white rice. Um, but what I have seen is that rice can come out really good or not so great, depending on how you make it. I think that a lot of restaurants make really good rice and I think that when you're cooking at home, you wish that your rice turned out like your favorite restaurant's rice every single time. Because rice is a staple for us, we put it with so many of our dishes, we have come up with a way to make white rice so that it turns out really good every time. I do just wanna say that we use this method for jasmine and long grain white rice. Um, we've also tried it on basmati and it has worked okay, but I can't say for any other types of white rice. So we're gonna start with rice. We typically make five cups at a time. Um, and the package will tell you to use two cups of water per one cup of rice. Um, what I do is actually use one cup of water per one cup of rice and then put in an additional quarter to a half cup for the entire batch, depending on the volume that you're making. So if you're making like two to three cups, I would use an additional quarter cup. If you're making, you know, five or six cups, then I would say use a half cup. Again, that's on top of the one cup of water per one cup of rice. So for mine, um, I'm gonna do five cups of rice and five and a half cups of water. Pot, measuring cup, rice. I use a low profile pot so that I can just stick my measuring cup right into it and measure it straight into the pot so that I don't have any issues with spillage. Also because I have such a huge container of rice, it's a lot easier for me to manage it with two hands. And I just dump it straight into the pot. After you have your rice all measured out, you're going to rinse it before you start cooking it. So you'll wanna fill the pot so that it's the water is just covering the rice. Um, swish it around to get some of the starch off and then drain it pretty much completely, like getting as much water out as possible. Um, I usually do this just using the pot lid, um, but if you're not comfortable with that or you're worried that the lid might come off and you'll spill rice all over your sink, um, you can use a strainer, something like this. Um, you just wanna make sure that whatever strainer you use is really fine um, so that you don't have rice like falling out of it while you're straining it. After you've rinsed it, um, you're gonna put in the one-to-one -one ratio of rice. So again, for mine with five cups um, of rice, I'm gonna do five and a half cups of water. What I like to do is use the first cup of water to rinse off the lid um, because you will have little pieces of rice grains stuck to the top of the lid. Um, so I will rinse it with the first cup of water to make sure that I'm getting all of it off. After you've added your water, you are going to put your rice on the stove um, over a high heat and then just wait for it to get up to a boil. So one of the most important things about this is to not take the lid off for the entire time that you're cooking it. Getting up to a boil should take, for me, about seven to eight minutes. Um, it is going to vary by how much rice you're cooking and then how big of a burner you're putting your pot onto. So you will have to kind of figure that out yourself, but you know, the average I'd say is probably between like six and nine minutes. If you don't have a pot with a glass or clear lid, what you'll wanna look for is for little bits of steam to be coming out of the side of the lid, but you definitely wanna make sure that you don't take the lid off to check to see if your water is boiling. So my water is just getting up to a boil right now. So I would turn it down to a simmer, but what I'm gonna show you is what to do if you can't get to the pot fast enough. Um, you'll see that the bubbles are starting to build um, and it will actually get to a point where it'll overflow if I don't stop this from happening, even if I turn it down to a simmer. What you'll wanna do is release the pressure without fully taking the lid off. So what you'll do is put it down to a simmer and you'll just pop the lid 
And what you'll see is that it releases all of those bubbles without having it boil over. And then you're just gonna let your rice simmer for 15 minutes. Once your timer's gone off, you wanna remove your pot from the heat and let it sit with the lid on for five minutes. This is to make sure that nothing sticks to the bottom. Um, but I will say, don't leave it for much longer than that because the rice will continue to cook and it can get mushy. After it's sat for five minutes, you wanna take your lid off and then you'll fluff it. I'm gonna use my trusty spatula from the last video. What I mean by fluff is you're gonna use your spatula to basically toss the rice inside the pot, um, which will put air into it and cool it down so that it does stop cooking. And what you'll end up with is nice fluffy rice. Good. Cooking it this way will change your opinion about eating rice by itself. I store my rice right after I have fluffed it so that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. Actually, I actually want to put the lids on these until it cools down. If you can get to it fast enough, you actually don't even have to soak your pan afterward. You should be able to just put it into the storage containers and then rinse it out right away. So that's it for today. If you like this video, please do subscribe. Um, comment below, give me a thumbs up. Um, you can also subscribe to my website at plantsnotplastic.com as well as follow me on social media. All that information is detailed below in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.